1998, number nine. The flow of oil in barrels per hour through the pipeline on July 9th is given by the graph shown above. On the following, which best approximates the total number of barrels that oil pass through the pipeline? Okay, so let me give you some background on this. Let's say A of T is the amount of oil. Okay, if that's true, what is this? The flow of oil in barrels per hour. So this one's a little trickier because they don't say it, but this is actually the rate of oil flowing. So this is actually A prime of T, the rate of the oil, amount of oil. It's how fast oil is flowing, so it's a rate. The clue is it's in barrels per hour or units per hour. So that's a derivative. So this one's a little trickier. They don't tell you, but that's a derivative. It's the rate at which oil is flowing um, through the pipeline. So they want to approximate the total number of barrels of oil. So here is the secret. If you integrate A prime of T from zero to 24, what does that give you? Well, the antiderivative A prime is A from zero to 24, which is this. So this is the amount of oil after 24 hours. This is the amount of oil at the beginning of 24 hours. If you subtract that, it gives you the change in the amount of oil, or in other words, how much oil has flowed through the pipeline. So they want to approximate the total number of barrels of oil that pass through the pipeline. Well, you integrate the rate, it tells you the change in what's the rate of. So basically, we want this integral. But what is an integral? It's an area. Integrals come from Riemann sums, and it's an area. So what they're really asking you is, what's the area of that region? Well, we're going to have to approximate this. And I'll show you how we're going to approximate it. If you want the net area, you're going to have to say, you know what? That's pretty close to a rectangle. And that's another rectangle. And that's another rectangle. And that's pretty much another rectangle. You can see there's a little bit of error because there's a little pieces that shouldn't be there. And then you have to say to yourself, you know what? These two up here, they're like two triangles. And two triangles combine to be one rectangle. So you're gonna say I have one, two, three, four, five rectangles. So I have five and the area of each rectangle is 100 by six. So each one has an area of 600. I have five of them. That's about 3,000. So you're just approximating the area under the curve by getting shapes that you know the area of. So that's how you do number nine.